Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Today is a beautiful, beautiful Shabbat. A Shabbat like no other, but it is Shabbat indeed. Praise the Lord. Whether you're home, it's Shabbat. Whether you're at a service somewhere, it is Shabbat. If you're a pastor and you're preparing for a little message you're going to give to a, an empty congregation tomorrow, it is Shabbat. Today is truly the Lord's day, no matter where you are. And it is a Shabbat indeed like no other. So wherever you are, wherever you are celebrating, even if you don't even know that you're celebrating Shabbat, today you are celebrating Shabbat. Today is a Shabbat, practically for the whole world. And we're going to enter into this amazing thing that God has for all of us, this incredible, incredible thing of Him using this little microbe to put the world into a state of rest, a state of Shabbat. So this is a, a day like no other, a time like no other. This is a Shabbat like no other. Praise the Lord. So let's just praise the Lord wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We know this is an impactful time. Um, we know that some folks, um, you know, are, are working in places where they're considering either closing or they're considering laying people off or they're considering, um, you know, closing their doors, maybe even temporarily. It's a, it's a challenging time. For all of us, um, I'm, I'm very blessed in the company that I work with in my working nine to five job that um, I'm able to work remote. I'm able to work from home. Um, they made an announcement that if anybody winds up getting coronavirus, they can take time off without even using their allotted, uh, you know, days, uh, vacation days. So I'm very, very blessed to work for a company that's really looking after their employees. But other people are struggling. And other people are scared and other people are hurting. Um, so I really want to encourage, I really want to encourage everyone that's listening now live or anyone that's listening in the future, as this will stay on the Facebook page. You know, it's one thing to go to a service and to receive. It's one thing to go to a service and receive. And unfortunately, in a religious environment, we have turned Shabbat, the Sabbath, God's incredible day, into a two-hour experience where we come together as a congregation, and it's beautiful. And we worship together, and we sing together, and we listen to a word, and we get our butts home, and we go about the rest of our day, our Saturdays, as if it was like any other day of the week. Shabbat, biblically, is not a two-hour service. Shabbat, biblically, is a day of rest. And God, I think, is teaching all of us to get out of what we're used to. To get out of our own definition of what we think it is. Oh, we're keeping Shabbat. You know why I keep Shabbat? I went to service. I went to my two-hour service on a Saturday and not a Sunday. You want to see my muscles? I'll show you my muscles. This is a spiritual muscle because of I went to service on a Saturday. And now I'm going home and I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to take care and do the things I got to do and I'm going to mow the lawn and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. That is not Shabbat. That is not Shabbat. You can stop flexing your little spiritual muscles that you go on to service on a, on a Saturday and not a Sunday. You can let those muscles atrophy. Our spiritual muscles are exercised today. Today. When we're at home. When we're almost forced to stay there. When we're forced to slow down. And I think God is saying something. And if we listen clearly to what God is saying, 
you will recognize that today is a Shabbat like no other. And I ain't no end times prophet. You can go to many, many other ministers that'll tell you if this has anything to do with the end times or not. I'm not that prophet. And I don't know if uh, Mishkan David's service will be home like we're today for one Shabbat or for ten. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know if the season is going to last for this long or that long. I don't know if this is a trial run or the real thing. But what I do have to say today is everyone, wherever you are, wherever you are, whether you're home with your kids, whether you're home alone, whether you have one friend with you and you're six feet social distancing from them, or you went to a service today, or you're going to a service tomorrow. You know, it's the book of Hebrews that says, Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. That is the spirit of Shabbat. And I tell you the truth that through all of this, God is speaking. God is speaking. Well, this Shabbat is not really for the Christians. The Shabbat is, you know, Old Testament yeah, well, everybody, 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 everybody is keeping Shabbat today. How awesome is that? So enjoy it. Enjoy it. So I'm here in my bunker in Westerly, Rhode Island, hunkered in my bunker, acting all silly. And I got a little bit of technology going here. So give me a second, because I'm going to be able to see the live stream from my own Facebook page and I could kind of write on it as I talk to you here. So just give me a minute to see if this works. So shalom everyone. Hey, there I am. Hey, that's pretty cool. Bless the Lord. All right. Shabbat shalom from Ohio in Ohio. Elizabeth Kaufman Cartier is watching. Praise the Lord. Oh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth is watching twice. Bless the Lord. All right. So here I am. So I'm going to say shalom. Watch this. Peeps. There you go. That works great. All right. So let's just keep this interactive, okay? Just feel free to type. Ah, shalom, Mike. Good to see you. Blessings. Kiss your dog. I don't think we need to social distance from our doggies. So uh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So, you know, first and foremost, let's just make sure we're okay. Uh, I really want to encourage everybody in this time that we're home uh, to reach out to people. Uh, you know, I have become, in modern times, more of a texter than a phone guy. Does anybody else relate to that? Anybody relate to being a, more of a texter these days than a phone guy? Um, you know, I resemble that remark. Um, but, you know, this is a time where let's let's make sure we reach out to people you know i'm blessed i got i got my beautiful wife with me at home uh got my cats and a lot of people have families and even if we are at home we're with our families you know there's a lot of people that are alone that don't have their uh connectivity right now so i really want to encourage everybody to to pick up that phone and call people uh call people that you know live alone uh call some you know people that are maybe elderly and are being told they, they even more so need to stay in their homes so let's Let's not just go to a service. Let's not take the Shabbat to just pretend we went to a service to learn about Yeshua. Let's be Yeshua. Let's be the King of Glory, and let's let's care for other people and show God's love to other people. Simple thing we can do is just call people, make sure they're okay. There's a lot of people that aren't okay. They just don't want to reach out. Uh, they're afraid to reach out. They don't want to be a burden. Uh, so reach out to those who are on your heart. Spend five minutes with people on the phone. It'll make a lot of difference. Okay. Um, and also, uh, you make sure you put out a prayer request. I just want to put out this, uh, our mishkandavid.org slash prayers. How's that? Yeah, that works. Bing. So, you know, make sure you fill out a prayer request. Uh, let us know that you're okay. All right. Um, so, uh, we're going to go through a little teaching on the Torah and that's what we're going to do this week. So, uh, this Torah starts at Exodus 35 and it's, uh, it's the last Torah portion in the book of Exodus. And after 
every to- every book in the Torah, when we go through the cycle and we read uh, the Torah, we say, after every book, we say, Chazak, Chazak, ben- Kazak, that is, be strong, Chazak. So I want everybody to learn that. I'm going to type that one in English so you know how to say it. Come on now. All right, my my wife is is calling me Manoodle. I think I'm going to end this broadcast early. Um, so Chazak, Chazak, be strong. Chazak, be strong. And when you're feeling a little discouraged in this time or a little fearful, I want you to remember that Hebrew word, Chazak. Chazak, be strong, be strong, be strong. This is the words that, that even God told Joshua before he took the land. Be strong, Chazak. Chazak. And then we do that after every book that we finish in the Torah. So this is where at the end of the book of Exodus, it's Exodus 35. And isn't it interesting? So this, this uh, Torah portion is uh, broken out essentially into three sections. Uh, it starts with a teaching on the Sabbath. Then it goes to uh, people giving free will offerings towards the building of the Mishkan, the tabernacle, the tabernacle in the wilderness. And then the Mishkan is built and the glory of the Lord falls on the falls on the, the tabernacle. And I love how important Shabbat is to God because this entire Torah portion, 95% of it is about building the Mishkan, about construction, building the Mishkan. But he starts it with saying, remember the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath. And that is so important that even in the midst of doing an, an amazing thing, a spiritual thing of building up the tabernacle, God is always reminding us to keep the Sabbath. It's very, very important to him. It's very, very important to him. Um, so I want to go back to the root to start with what the Sabbath is. I want to bring it into what we're talking about here. Um, so let me just get to my little notes here where I have the scriptures. So I'm a believer in a lot of cases that when you look in the Bible and you look at the first time, the very first time uh, a thing is mentioned, a word is mentioned, a verb or a noun is mentioned, very often that gives a, a extra special meaning to really what it means biblically. And if you look at the first place that the word Shabbat is mentioned in the scripture, uh, it's in Exodus 16, and it's within the story of the manna coming from heaven. Now, in Genesis, we learn about the seventh day and how God made the seventh day holy, but the, but the Hebrew word Shabbat, Shin Bet uh, Tav, um, the first time we see it is in Exodus 16, and it's interesting that it says in Exodus 16, the, the root of the Sabbath. And it says this. I'm going to start in verse 27. And I'm, even, I'm even going to put it into the text here so you see it. So this is Exodus, I'm type 16, 27 to 30. And let me paste and see what happens. Ah, awesome. Bam. So... It came about on the seventh day that the sons of the people went to gather, but they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my instructions? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Um, therefore, he gives you bread for two days. On the sixth day, remain... Listen, listen, this is the root of the Sabbath. I mean, how much is this meaningful to what we're going through today? Remain every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The, and all the different commandments about Shabbat, the first time that the Shabbat is mentioned in all of the scriptures, the simplest part, the most basic root of keeping the Sabbath is stay home. Let no man uh, go out of his place on the seventh day. Remain every man in his place. This is why I want to tell you, where, if you are staying at home and you're feeling a little discouraged, I want you to know that this is Shabbat. That this is a Shabbat that God has called. It's a special Shabbat, and we're learning to do the basics, the basics of what God has ordained from the beginning with taking a day to rest. You know, we are in such a crazy time where it's a crazy environment. All we know how to do is run, 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 run. But is it possible? And just feel free to respond, even in the text, if you think it's possible. Do you think it's possible that the people of God have gotten so busy that God has actually ordained this thing, to take us back and to bring us back home? Is it possible? And just feel free to agree or disagree or just type away. 
um, if you think that this could be a God-ordained thing to make us keep the Sabbath. And there is a biblical precedent for this also. So um, there was a time when uh, the children of Israel, Israel, was kicked out of their land because they weren't allowing the land to keep its Sabbaths. And it, it was even prophesied in the Torah, in Leviticus. Um, it says, and I will post it for you, um, this is Leviticus um, 26, 33 through 35. And there it is. And it's, it's, it's a prophecy. It's like, I'm, if you sin, Israel, I'm going to disperse you among the nations. You know, and, but when I do, it says the land will be paid its Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate and you're in the land of your enemies, the land will be rest and repaid its Shabbats. As long as it lies desolate um, and you did not give it its rest, I'm going to give it its rest. In other words, the land, every seven years, the land was supposed to have a Sabbath. Just like we're supposed to have a Sabbath every once a week, the land is supposed to have a Sabbath. Okay, But the children of Israel didn't keep that commandment. So God kicked them out of the land and God repaid the land. He repaid the land to have its Sabbath. So he kicked out the people and now the land is have its, have its Sabbath. That's how important the Sabbath is to God. It's an amazing thing. So is it possible? I ask you this. I ask you. Feel free to say, no, this is government conspiracy. But feel free to respond. But I can see God saying, the Sabbath is so important to me. And the people of God are just going crazy. They are working themselves 24 by 7. They're living in an Egypt mindset, a slavery mindset. And I'm going to just take them and I'm going to bring them back to their homes. And I'm going to put some wacky thing in place where they're not even going to be allowed to leave. And they are going to rest and keep my Sabbaths. And uh, hey, I, like I said, I'm not an end times prophet. You know, but um, perhaps it's, that is what God is doing. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's an amazing time. All right, listen, I want to, um, I want to go to the next section of the Torah portion, which is uh, the contributions. Uh, now, everybody was given uh, uh, the commandment to give a contribution to the Mishkan, to the tabernacle, based on their own uh, heart. Uh, in this Torah portion, in Exodus 35, verse 5, and I'll post that as well. Hold on. You can have it. Uh, take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Whoever is of a generous heart, let him bring the Lord's contribution. It continues. Everyone whose heart stirred them and whose spirit moved them brought the Lord's contribution to be used for the tent of meeting. Uh, so I just want to give everybody um, the, the ways to continue to give at Mishkan. Um, now, Mishkan is a unique place. We have no expenses whatsoever. And obviously, we're not even paying our rent now, you know, of the uh, money we give to Lighthouse Church. Um, so all of, our, all of the money that does come in, uh, 100% of it, I mean, there's a little bit that goes to, like, websites and things like that. So, like, 99% goes to people in need. And this is a time, I believe, where the storehouse should be filled with food. Because this, the time could be coming when people are out of work for a really long time and they're going to need help. Uh, we certainly know that our orphans in Haiti, um, they could be um, experiencing something very, very drastic in the next couple of days. Uh, I put out a request, you know, for people to give money for the orphanage, for an orphanage in Haiti, so they'll have food, like a Joseph moment, so they can have food in their storehouse, so if trouble comes, they'll have a safe haven in the orphanage. And we did get many wonderful donations. I'm so thankful for it. Uh, and we did instruct uh, the uh, director of the orphanage to go and get some food. Uh, you know, when I gave that message, there wasn't a single case in Haiti of, of coronavirus. Now, as I give this message, there are a couple of cases. So it, again, it's starting to starting to spread. Um, so it's, I think it is important now to, to continue to give. So I just want to give a couple of ways um, to give uh, while we are at home, however long it may be. Uh, the first one, we actually have a new way of, of giving, uh, which is texting. Uh, you can actually text to give. We have a, a unique uh, phone number that if you text um, to give... Uh, you can give the phone number that I just uh, put into the comments, 208-537-2268. Um, you'll have to sign up, but you can actually text a donation. Uh, you can go to the, uh, uh, our website, um, which I'll post here, and that's mishkandavid.org slash give. Uh, you can give that way. And if you are 
old fashioned and you want to give a check, uh, you can make the check out to Mishkan David, but mail it to Stephanie. Uh, don't mail it to the post office box, so Stephanie um, can also just get the check at home, and uh, I have the information here. So um, anyway, give, just like it says in this Torah portion, give as your heart leads. Um, it's important that the storehouse is filled. Not a single cent of it, as you know. None of us are on salary. Uh, we don't pay anything, so it all goes to people that are in need. So I, this is, I think this is a really good time to, to, to have, make sure the storehouse is filled with food uh, so we can help people in need if things become a little bit worse, okay? Um, the next part of the Torah portion is the actual construction of the tabernacle. And what, what is the tabernacle? What is the tabernacle in the wilderness? Uh, feel free to respond, okay? I'd love to see some responses on that, okay? What is the tabernacle in the wilderness? Anybody want to type in what that is? Like, what is the purpose of the tabernacle? Um, so a couple of things. Oh, did I... Oh, thank you, Steffi. Wait, wait, wait. I can. I think I can actually change that. Stand by, stand by. I gave the wrong zip code. Oh, I can edit it. Love technology. Bam. Edited. Okay, thank you, Steffi. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, does anybody want to type in, like, what the tabernacle is and what the meaning of the tabernacle is? Um, the tabernacle is the place of God's dwelling. Now, in that place, in the wilderness, this was the place, the place where God's presence resided. If people wanted to go to connect with God, this is the place they came to. It's also a place where people found atonement. It's if people wanted to give an offering and they, they either wanted to connect with God through giving an offering, give a thanksgiving offering, whether they sinned and they want to come and make right, this is where they gave their offering. Uh, it's, it's, it's where they communed with God, and that was the place of God's presence. The tabernacle was the place of God's presence. So, I mean, what, what do you think the tabernacle is? Feel free to write whatever you think the tabernacle is. Um, but it is the place where the glory of God was filled. And even at the end of this Torah portion, we see the glory of the Lord filled this tabernacle. It was an amazing place, but I, I really want everybody to grasp this. Um, God gives revelation progressively. What was the most amazing thing at one time pales in comparison to what he's about to do. And this is really important, and this is the way it is over and over and over again through biblical times and even outside of biblical times throughout history. God can do an amazing thing, and we can look at that thing as an amazing, amazing move of God. He poured out his spirit, there was revival or whatever it is. Whatever it is, there's always something greater, greater that God is doing. Greater things, there's a song that we love at Mishkan that we play a lot, greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Does anybody hear that verse resounding in the heavens right now as we're all kind of stuck in, stuck in our homes? Greater things are yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Anybody in New York City, which is on complete lockdown, you're not allowed to do anything, listening to me right now and hearing those words from heaven, greater things are yet to come in this city. This is an amazing time, amazing time. Don't be scared. Sons and daughters of God. Don't be scared, sons and daughters of God. Rest. Enjoy your rest. Enjoy what this is. Enjoy what it is for what it is. Listen to the voice of God because he's speaking probably louder than ever since we're all being quiet. Maybe that's why he wants us in our homes on Shabbat. Because it's less, it's less noisy. It's very noisy out in the world. It's very quiet in our homes. So maybe in the quiet we can hear what he's saying. But greater things are always coming. As much as he could do something great, he, there's always a word from heaven. Always a word from heaven. You just wait to see what I'm about to do. He's always saying that. He's always saying, you just wait and see. You think that was good. You just wait. You have this amazing Shabbat service. You come and the spirit falls and it's an amazing service. You come out of there and if you were listening to the voice of God, you say, he'll say, just wait. Just wait. If you think that was good, you just wait. You just wait. And he is saying that now. So there's always progressive, he's always progressing the revelation. So what was awesome back then is just a shadow of something greater. 
And as awesome as the tabernacle was, it was just a shadow of something. As awesome as it was, as we see in the end of this Torah portion where the glory fell down, boom, on the tabernacle, on the Mishkan, it was still just a foreshadow. And we see in 2 Samuel verse 7, King David uh, saw that it was, there was something greater. So let me, let, me, let me give you that verse here. This is from 2 Samuel 7, 2. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All is well, sons and daughters. All is well, sons and daughters. So 2 Samuel 7, 2, it says, see now, I, this is David talking. Like, I've always envisioned it this way. Like, David had this pretty awesome house. But the tabernacle was this little, little tent, right? And the Ark of the Covenant was behind these little curtains. And I always see him just walking in Jerusalem, you know, and he, he takes a look at his place, and he's taking a look at how nice it is, and, and uh, the, the paint job, and and uh, the, the tiles on the roof, and the, 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 uh, the, the door, and the shutters on the window, and uh, it's like, wow, this is a really nice house. It's mani- the lawn is manicured, got some nice bushes that, that bloom, you know, throughout the year, and he's looking at his house, he's like, man, I got a pretty nice house. But then he looked on the other side, and he saw the tabernacle. He saw this little, unassuming tent where God dwelled. And he looked at it, and he looked up at his own place. And he looked down at the tabernacle. And he looked at his own place. And he looked at the tabernacle. And he said, something's not right here. Something's not right. Like, why am I in this house when the tabernacle is such a small thing? And God almost laughed at him. He's like, he's like, are you kidding? Like, you could make me a house. Like, a whole universe is my footstool. You know, like, if I just need to put my feet up, I'll just put it on the universe. You know, you have Ottomans, I have the universe, is what God is saying. It's almost mocking David, but he said something amazing. He said, yeah, you're going to build me a temple, but it's not really you that's going to build a temple. It's your son that will build me a temple. And in that, we have this also amazing messianic prophecy. Um, Let's see, 2 Samuel 7, 13 to 14... Keep me honest, Steffi, if I'm writing something wrong. Oh, Lou the Jew is watching all of you. I've got to hand off to Lou for the announcements. Here are the announcements. We don't have any announcements. End of announcements. All right. Um, he shall build a home for my name. <laughs> don't make me laugh, people, with the Lou the Jew stuff. You guys are all so beautiful. Oops. Hold on a second. I just... Uh... Just made a boo-boo. Hold on, you. All right. Come on. So David saw um, the tabernacle, little tabernacle. He saw his big home, and he said, God, i got to make you a house. This is just not right. There's something wrong here. And God said, it's not going to be you. It's going to be your son that's going to establish, that's build a house for my name and his throne will be a kingdom forever. Now, of course, in the natural, he's talking about Solomon, but really he's talking about Yeshua. And why do we know that he's talking about Yeshua, the Messiah, the son of David? Because verse 14 says, I, God saying, I will be a father to him, and he will be a son to me. Hello, the son of David is also the son of God. That is a messianic prophecy right there. Do you see it? It's amazing. It's amazing. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So here we have the progressive revelation. We have the little tabernacle, but David saw there was something bigger. There was something greater. As good as the tabernacle was, it was pale to what God was about to do. And God fulfilled that and built the temple. And the temple became the thing. And if you see, even in 2 Chronicles 7, um, 7 verse 1 through 3, the glory of the Lord filled the temple just like the tabernacle. Here you go. Let me, let me, let me give that to you guys. Um, well, do I have it? Nope. So second, second Chronicles 7, I'm sorry, I don't have the verse right in front of me. Uh, God filled the temple. The glory of the Lord fell. It consumed the sacrifice. And the glory of the Lord fell on the temple, just like it did in the tabernacle. So it was a greater revelation. There was the tabernacle, and now there's the temple. But the revelation continues. Because God is always saying, you think this temple is good? There's something greater coming. You think this is good? You think this temple is awesome? You just wait. 
to something greater. Do you understand what I'm saying? The tabernacle in the wilderness, the glory fell on it. The people loved it. The people recognized that it was the house of God, that it was where his dwelling place is, is where his spirit was, is where people can find God, find atonement, get right with God. And God said, this is awesome, but there's something greater. And David caught that revelation and said, there is something greater, and I'm going to build a temple. And God allowed his son, Solomon, to build the temple. Now we're in the times of Yeshua. And the children of God, the, I'm sorry, the, um, the disciples, the disciples of Yeshua are walking past the temple. And it's in Matthew 24. And Yeshua came out from the temple, it says. And the disciples pointed out the temple. said, hey, take a look. Take a look at how awesome this temple is, Yeshua. And what did Yeshua say? He said, uh, do you not see all these things? I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another. But he didn't just leave it as a, as a teardown prophecy that the temple was going to be destroyed. In John 2, it says, destroy, Yeshua said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The progressive revelation continues. Do you see it? The tabernacle was it, but David saw there was something greater. Then there was the temple, but the disciples said, hey, look at this. And Yeshua said, you know what? There's something greater. Destroy this temple, and I will raise it up in three days. Uh, it continues on in uh, John 2, 19 through 21, and I will quote this for you. I'm going to put it into the news feed here. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So how does Yeshua uh, close it? It says, I will destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. Three days. And uh, the Jews were like, it took 46 years to build this temple, and you're going to raise it up in three days? But then John wrote, but he was speaking of the temple of his body. Now, notice it doesn't say he was speaking of himself. You've got to hear this. This is so important. And this is important for our time, and this is important for what we're doing today, and this is important for this world today and for the body of Messiah today as buildings, churches are closing and uh, everybody's doing kind of what we're doing. They're trying to keep people together. And, and God bless. And pray, pray, pray for your pastors. And pray for rabbis. And pray for congregations that, that bravely shut their doors. And don't judge them for shutting their doors. Everybody's doing what they feel is right in a very, very unique time. And we're taking it week by week. So pray for them. They have a lot to lose. You know, if this winds up being a quarantine that lasts an extended period of time, Listen, you know how it is, right? People are going to start hoarding their own money, and, and congregations are going to lose a lot of their revenue, right? This is very possible that congregations are going to use, lose a lot of their income, and they're going to be very stretched. Pastors are going to be stretched. Churches are going to be stretched. So don't judge them. Pray for them. Pray for them. We're all doing what we feel is right for our community. But, okay, getting back to this, all right? So he said, destroy this temple, and I'll raise it up in three days. But it says that he wasn't talking about the temple itself. He was talking about the temple of his body. Now we know that in three days, Yeshua was resurrected. But here's the revelation I want you to get, and this is what is important for our time. Who is the body of Yeshua? Who is the body of Messiah? Come on. Where is the body of Messiah? Is it a building? Is it a church building? Is it a synagogue building? That is not... The fulfillment of it, the greater revelation from tabernacle to temple to the destruction of the temple to Yeshua saying, destroy this thing and I'm going to raise up in three days. And John clarifying, saying it's his body. He wasn't saying I'm going to raise up church buildings. That is not the greater revelation of the temple. You are the temple of God. You that have God's spirit within you. You are the temple of God. You are the greater revelation. It started with the tabernacle and the glory fell on it. And then it became a temple and the glory fell on it. When do we see the glory falling next? We see it at Pentecost. When the same spirit of God that consumed the offerings in the tabernacle, the same spirit of God that consumed the offerings in the temple fell on you, you are the temple of God. And how many scriptures do we have to... to to, to, uh, to validate that. Come on, I'll give you three in a row right now. Oh, 
Hold on now. Oh, it's typing. Oh, you really got a, a preacher can lose his flow. I'm not losing my flow. I'm going with the flow. Going with the flow, what you know. I don't know what that means. All right. Boom. There you go. Three scriptures. Right there. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. You are Christ's body. You are Messiah's body. Individual members of it. You are the, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 3.16, you are the temple of God. Remember, at Pentecost, the Spirit fell on you. It fell on the people. You are the fulfillment. You are the greater thing. When Yeshua said, this is coming down and I'm raising up my body in three days. Yes, he was, of course, talking about his physical body. But I'm telling you, there's a greater revelation to his body than just the man, because you are his body. You are him today. And how does this refer and how does this relate to what we're going through today? You are him in this world today. And Yeshua himself had to go through a little quarantine because he had a time when all the sins and all the sickness was on himself. As it says that he bore our sickness. And he took all our sickness upon himself and he went into the tomb for three days, which is almost like a quarantine. And then he came out resurrected and he came out glorified and he came out in power. And I'm telling you right now that this quarantine is temporary and this is God preparing his body to come out glorified. You are the body and we're in quarantine and we're about to come out glorified, which means, I was listening to Rabbi Peter's sermon uh, from Mishkan Nakamu, where they're having a service, and I, everybody should be watching him or going to his service every Saturday, um, and, and taking a look at that amazing, beautiful interchange of worship and word, and he started by saying, this is no longer practice time, this is the real thing, so what we're doing is like Yeshua took on the, took on the, the sickness of the world and went into quarantine and came out glorified, I have a hunch that this is not the, the, the death of the church. This is the glorification of the church. This is when you're going to see the gifts of the Spirit really activated. This is when you're going to see a church without walls, without buildings, because it's not about the building. It's not about the stadium. It's not about the multi-campuses. It's about getting out of the multi-campuses. God is going to raise up his body, destroy this temple, and I'll raise up my body in three days. Does anybody else hear those words coming from heaven today? Destroy this temple. The same words of Yeshua. Destroy this temple and I will raise up my body in three days. Come on. Come on. Come on. Destroy this temple. There's many temples of this world that are being destroyed today. Many temples of this world that are being destroyed today. The, the temples of money, the temples of business, the temples of, of sports and entertainment. It's all coming to a halt because of a little microbe. If you don't see God in that, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But God is raising up his body. So you may see it as like, oh man, I'm stuck in my house. I see it as pulling back. Before we're pushed forward. That's how I see it. Praise the Lord. 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 This is the rising up time. This is the awakening time. And you all, my friends and family in Rhode Island, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you, the pastors in Rhode Island that are listening here. We've been praying for revival. We've been praying for awakening. We've had revivalists come. And we've been praying for awakening, 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 awakening. We're going to go to an awakening event. We're going to go for five days and we're going to go and we're going to have, you know, times of revival services and praying for awakening. And we're like, and then that little season ends. And we're like, what is it? And where is it? What is it? This might be the awakening we're waiting for. Doesn't look what we think. This could be the awakening we're waiting for. God is pulling us back to experience a Shabbat. And Yeshua in the tomb experienced a Shabbat, by the way, 
because he was in the tomb on Shabbat. He said, my father is working unto this day, and so am I, which means that every Shabbat he was doing healing, but there was one Shabbat that he rested, and that was the Shabbat that he was in the tomb. But after that, he came out glorified, and the world would never be the same. What if we're kind of pulled back in this state of quarantine, and we're about to get pushed out and released into the world for such a time as this? I want to talk to my pastor friends in Rhode Island. Don't be discouraged. This could be the revival we've been praying for. All right? Praise the Lord. 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 Is that it? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's it. So, remember, all the things that you may have written, if you did, or learned about the tabernacle, how it was a place of atonement, about how people found God by going there, about how it was the place of the glory of the Lord. If people want to experience God, they went there. The fulfillment of that is not just a building. It's you. It's you. So in this Torah portion, in this day, we see the fulfillment. The fulfillment. We've seen a lot of Torah portions, portions in the book of Exodus, that the tabernacle was being built. In this Torah portion, while we're all at home, the tabernacle completes its construction and the glory of the Lord falls. May that be a prophetic, prophetic moment for this time that God is completing the construction of the tabernacles and the glory of the Lord is about to fall like never before. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. This is Rabbi Brian. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Enjoy your rest mishkandavid.org slash prayers. Don't be a hideaway. If you need anything, let us know. mishkandavid.org slash give. If you want to have the storehouse be filled up during this time for others. All right. Shabbat shalom.